miss. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lot, a lot give up from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Judah was the fourth son of Jacob. The day came when Jacob was to bless his children. He began from the oldest, Reuben. Then he went to the next one, Simeon. And then Levi, before he came to Judah. But when you begin to look at the blessings one by one, instead of giving leadership to Reuben, he didn't. Because of something that Reuben had done, Reuben lost leadership. You are all here today as leaders. They have found you worthy, one way or the other, in your fellowship to call you a leader. But the fact that you are a leader today does not mean you will remain a leader tomorrow. By natural order of selection, by birth, Reuben was a leader. He was the firstborn. But before the end of the story, Reuben lost leadership. I want you to help me tell your neighbor, may you not lose your position. Simeon and Levi, one of them could have taken the leadership. They also lost leadership because of what they have done. And leadership now fell on Judah. And when you look at the blessing that the father gave him, you will know this is not just an ordinary leader. This is going to be a kingly leader. A leader who will be a royalty. Scepter was handed over to Judah on that day. And the father told him, from now on, you are the one who will lead your brethren. The scepter was handed over to him. A passage in another translation. Let me read it for message translation. It says, you Judah, your brothers will press you. Your fingers on your enemy's throat. Why your brothers honor you. You are a lion's cub. Judah, home fresh from the kill, my son. Look at him. Crouch like a lion. King of beasts. Who dares mess with him? Those who have been trying to mess with you. From now on when they see you, they will fear you. <laughs> Say your amen very well. The scepter shall not leave Judah. It'll keep a firm grip on the command staff until the ultimate ruler comes and the nations obey him. Lion's cup. That was what his father called him. But he didn't just call him lion's cup. He told him, even though you will begin as a lion's cup, as the son of a lion, the daughter of a lion, bet you will grow up to become lion. And then you will grow up to become old lion, matured lion. From that particular passage, you can see development. He's not just a lion's cub, but he will couch as a lion and as he grows up he will become an old lion and that tells you something right away God expects development and spiritual maturity from your life God expects development and spiritual maturity from your life he started as Lion's cub, 
a small child. He went on to become lion and moved on to be old lion. As a child of God, you are supposed to be growing on daily basis. Spiritual maturity. And how do you grow? By the intake of the word of God. As you take the word of God into your life, as you encounter the word of God, it has a way of affecting you. And it affects your character. It is the word of God that forms your character. You might have been doing something before. Take for example, you will be someone who doesn't know that a child of God does not exaggerate. You know many people don't know that exaggeration is a big lie. They just want to tell a simple story before you know what is happening. It has become a book. Exaggeration. They will so expand that particular thing. A crusade that was held in a village. When they begin to talk about it, you will see that the crusade was held in Ibadan. The number of people that we are saved will be more than 10,000. All the people that are living in the village, they are not up to 500. Are you listening to me? But then, you come across something in the Bible. All of a sudden, ah, you say, hey, a child of God must not lie, oh, from today, no more exaggeration from my mouth. It is possible that there are some of you who have been bringing some of these people that they call comedians to your altar. Because you want to attract crowds. You bring comedians to the altar to come and make comedy of the Bible. Then one day, as you are reading the Bible, you come across the place where the Bible says, ah, nothing that is called a dirty joke must pass through your mouth. How can somebody come to the house of God and begin to run down the Bible and run down children of God and run down your pastor in the house of God? And you are laughing. But it's because you don't know the word of God. As you know the word of God, little by little, you discover there are things I've been doing before that I cannot do again. So you begin to grow from lion's cub to lion to hold lion. There is that development that is taking place in your life. Those who knew you six months ago, when they see you now, they see that difference in your life. Ah, uh-uh. they ask us, say, what is wrong with you? You also, you have gotten religion. You don't become as you. What has happened to you? you? You used to talk anyhow before, but now they discover you are so quiet, so gentle, so peaceful. They could see the glory of God upon your life. They can't understand. They don't know you have contacted the power of the Holy Spirit. Something is happening to you right now. Something is happening now. As the word of God proceeds into your life, you are being changed from glory to glory. Open your Bible with me to Second Chronicles. Oh, sorry, Second Corinthians, chapter three. I will look at the, ver- the last verse there. Second Corinthians chapter three, the last verse, verse eighteen. What does it say? But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed, changed. Another who can tell me another word for change? Transform. God bless you. We are transformed into the same image, from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. As we behold the glory of the Lord in His Word. And as we are looking at the glory as we are meditating in the Word. Something begins to happen within us. We are becoming like what we see. Because it is what you see that will determine what you will become. 
as you see the world and you see the Lord in the world the glory that you see that you contact in the world begins to radiate in your life it begins to affect your spirit man we are being changed from glory to glory so it is not what you have you had this year that you will be next year that you will be the year after year in year out you are changing you are growing spiritual development spiritual maturity that's why you must ask yourself question since i gave my life to christ what is it that has changed in my life can i say that i'm growing for many of you sisters the only thing that has changed in your life is that now everywhere you go you tie scarves that's the only thing you are still the same person when you are in the class the people cannot differentiate between you and unbelievers cha 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 cho 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 you don't even have time to hear the word to hear the lord you talk your life away you do not know that the bible says it is in silence and quietness that your strength will be what has changed in your life when you are unbeliever when you are outside there if anybody does anything to you immediately you want to talk back you want to revenge nobody can cheat you and you haven't changed even now you are even worse how can you then say you are a child of god if anyone is in christ is a new creature all things have passed away and everything has become is that in your bible maturity from lion's cup to lion to hold lion but because of the time available to us since we don't have all the time i have decided that i will just take one person who was from the tribe of judah a man that you can describe as a lion he started as a lion's cub but he grew until he became an old lion a man who made so much impacts a man who revealed to us that you can be a world changer a man who showed to us it is not your background that matters but where you are going and may I tell you it doesn't matter where you are now it doesn't matter even how rich or how prosperous your parents may be it doesn't matter how popular they may be oh you are going to be greater than them let me hear your amen very well the man I'm talking about is David he's a man that we have learned so much from but do you know David was from Judah so when Judah was being blessed on that day that particular blessing was for someone like David David was not yet born but everyone who was born in the family of Judah from the moment you are born you are born to be a leader you are born to be a king so when Israel was looking for a king the first king was from Benjamin not from Judah because the person I mean the people were in Judah they were not ready for kingship and then the fellow from Benjamin messed up Saul and God now said okay I think originally I gave kingship to Judah so let's go to Judah let's look for somebody who will be able to do these assignments and he began to look all over Judah and he didn't find anyone in town and he went into the forest looking at all those people who are Judah 
and he found a boy who was following sheep. Oh, he said, this is my next king. You know, there are many people who are looking at you now in the campus. They may not even be greeting you. They may just look at you and not just look away. They may say that you don't have enough fine clothes. They may say you are not a fine boy. You are not a fine girl. They may say you are not popular. You know, there are big babes in the campus. They say you are not one of them. They don't know that there is kinship inside you. They don't know that tomorrow you are the one who will employ them. Who am I speaking about? Who am I talking about? Are you the one? Are you the one? If you are the one, shout a good hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 2 verse 12 to 15. First Chronicles chapter 2 verse 12 to 15. And Boaz begat Obed. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat his firstborn Eliab. And Abinadab the second. And Shema the third. Nathanael the fourth. Radai the fifth. Oxem the sixth. David the seventh David was the last son of the family but David was the star of the family when God was looking for the king he looked at all the boys who were before David none of them qualified to be the king but he found David I am praying if God should come to your family and he's going to look for one person that will be his representative tomorrow. May he find you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There was an event in the life of David. This kind of exposition, we can't be looking at the whole of his life. You want to look at the whole of the life of David? Oh. You will have to start from all the way from 1st Samuel, go to 2nd Samuel, 1st K, 1st Chronicles, uh, 2nd Chronicles, and some other portion of the Bible, including the book of Proverbs, I'm uh, sorry, the book of Psalms. Because he wrote about 50% of the book of Psalms. The sweet psalmist of Israel. Great man of God. But we don't pick one event from his life and learn from some lessons from him. Those lessons will equip you and will also challenge you how to manage being from the kingly tribe. Because you are carrying royalty over your life. What was that event? The event is in First Kings chapter 17 1st Kings chapter 17 one day his father called him David I want you to go and check the welfare of your brother in the war front before that time there was a war between the Philistines and the Israelites And the brothers of David, the first three, they were old enough to be soldiers. The next four were not old enough. So three of them were at home. David was in the bush with the animals. And because he was the last born, the father called for him. I want you to go and check the welfare of your brother who had gone to war. And also I want you to greet their captain. Give this one to him. Bring me words. Let me know how my children are doing. And that's a very beautiful thing for us to learn from. Everyone who is a child of God is your brother, is your sister. If anybody comes to your fellowship that you don't see tomorrow, you must follow them up. I became a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God because some people followed me up. 
the very first day that I entered into redeem that day before evening they got to my house they became my friend up till today we are still friends and I'm talking of almost 50 years ago <clears throat> go and check for me how are they doing check on one another these days when we have an email and whatsapp and facebook and this and that we have replaced personal touch with social network ushers please attend to her Hallelujah. You cannot replace personal touch with social network. You can't say, oh, I have already checked on her. I sent her, I chatted her yesterday. I sent her some messages on WhatsApp yesterday. I hope, I hope she's doing well. No, you can't do that. Please concentrate here. Don't look at that too. You know you didn't come because of that. Tell your friend, that's not what you came for. Mm-hmm. Personal touch. Up till today, personal touch is the best that can happen. Some people conducted a research. They wanted to find out what personal touch does, does in our life. So they conducted a research with newborn babes. There were these children that were just born in this particular world. Some of them, they separated them. The nurses will not touch them. The mother will not carry them. They will feed them when when they are in their in their crib. No personal touch. The others. The mother will carry them, cuddle them, laugh with them, sing to them. After some days, the ones that had no personal touch, they became sick. The ones with personal touch, they were growing, they were bouncing. In some else, personal touch has a way of affecting your personalities. If God wants us to be individuals who will have no interaction with others, He will have created us in silos. But He created us to be social beings. He created us in families. Personal touch. That's why from today, every time you are fellowship and there's someone who didn't show up, before that evening is over, somebody must take the person up. Does that make sense? Can we do that? Can we do it? And then you will see the way it's going to affect your fellowship. When you care for one another, people like a place where they are caring for them. So David went to the war front. As he got there, looking for his brothers, all of a sudden, he heard someone boasting, challenging the children of Israel. Wow! Wow! (laughs) <laughs> I want you to open your Bible to First Samuel chapter 17 First Samuel 17 I will read it from verse 23 I'm going to compress everything within the next Within the next 15 minutes I will round up this particular message I read from verse 23 And as he talked with them Behold, there came up a champion The Philistine of God Goliath by name 
out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. He has been saying that for almost 40 days now. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make, him, make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth these Philistines and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Some people saw Goliath. Hey, they said this man is too big, oh. We can't take him. We can't stand before him. And for 40 days, they have been running away from him. David got there one day. He said, ah, this one is so big, I can't miss him. Two people saw the same thing, but their interpretations are different. Some people said, we can't take him. It's too big for us. David said, I can't miss him. This is my, this is my animal. I will kill him. And at the end of the day, David finished him. Every Goliath that has been standing before you shall fall down in the name of Jesus. So the first question we want to ask ourselves from this passage is this. How do you assess your challenge? In life, there are challenges. You can't pray them away. How do you assess them? Assess them. How do you assess your challenge? Oh, this challenge is too big, oh. Everybody who had ever had this challenge, he has killed them. That's somebody. And that one will look at the challenge and say, Oh, this challenge is so big, but it's so bigger than my God. How do you assess your challenge? Moses was at the Red Sea. The people of Israel, they saw the Red Sea. Moses also saw the Red Sea. The people of Israel said, Moses, why did you take us here? You should have allowed us to die in Egypt. Moses said, don't worry yourself. Fear not. You don't have any reason to be afraid. God will deliver us. He doesn't know how God will do it. They saw the same challenge. They saw the same Red Sea. But while the people were looking at the Red Sea, Moses was looking at God. I want you to ask your neighbor, who are you looking at? Many of you, whenever you have a challenge, the first thing you will do, ah, this challenge, this particular sickness was what killed so 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 person and killed so 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 person. And kill so so person. And now the doctor said that's exactly the same problem I'm having. And then what are you saying? You're already telling yourself that you want to die. If the sickness has killed other people, the sickness cannot kill you. What has stopped others from fulfilling their destiny must bow before you. I challenge you today you have come to this particular program so that you can be reprogrammed the problem with many of us is that we have been wired in a way to think failure as you look at the word of God you see how people think and you know that it is your thinking that will determine your outcome 
If you think failure, you will automatically prepare yourself for defeat. If you think success, even though there are challenges and barriers on the way, as you begin to think success, what you think will affect what is on the way. The, out, the challenges and the barriers will clear for you and then you can pass through. Moses saw the Red Sea like every other person. But he said, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The same Red Sea. I have been a missionary on the field for quite some years now. As I go from country to country, from city to city, we have seen different challenges. But I have also seen what my father can do. I don't allow challenges to determine my response. I respond according to the bigness, the greatness of my God. Even when I don't have any cover in my pocket, I speak like a rich man. Why? It is not how much money I have in my pocket or in my bank account that determines my prosperity. My prosperity is determined by the one who owns the heaven and the earth. So when someone comes around and is riding a big car, it doesn't move me. My prosperity is not determined by my car. My father doesn't even ride a car. He rides on the wings of an angel. An angel carries him. So somebody now is holding a key. Whether he has even borrowed the car, you don't know. And then he's flinging the key before you. And then he has come and said, I want to marry you. And you are also running after him. Many of you girls, you don't know what to fall for. And you will fall for anything in trouser. If you don't know your God. Ask your neighbor, do you know your God? Why is it that the yow yow boys are flourishing? They are flourishing and people are running after them because they are people who don't have knowledge. Whenever I see some of these boys, I pity them. Because I know they have no future. Many rich men that you see in Nigeria today have no future. That's the reason why you must know your God. Assess your situation. Measure the situation by the greatness of your God. Caleb and Joshua were two out of twelve who were sent out to look at the promise uh, to, to spy this promised land. The ten brought bad news. The two brought good news. Forty-five years later, Caleb was now on the land. Now all the people that that carry bad news. Where are they? May I tell you, all the people who are carrying bad news today around in your campus, by the time you are flourishing, they will have disappeared. I am a carrier of good news. Because my father carries good news. After 45 years, he was still strong. He said, I'm 85 years old now. And I can still fight battles. He said, you remember, on that particular day when we came around here, my brothers who came with us, they made the heart of people to faint. But I held on to my God. He said, in Joshua chapter 14, from verse, 4, from verse 11, Joshua 14 from 11, he said, as yet, I am as strong this day. As I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was, was then. Even so, is my strength now, 
for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. The other said, No, Anakims are there. They are tall. We are like grasshoppers before them. And the moment they pronounce it with their mouth that they are like grasshoppers, they became grasshoppers inside. I am not a grasshopper. Ask your neighbor, who are you? What was his answer? <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. David was thinking solution. Why the others was responding, I mean we are responding in fear. David was thinking solution. What are we going to do? How am I going to deal with this man? How are we going to remove the shame from Israel? The others, the moment they heard the voice of the Philistine, they said, hey, he has come again, no. Oh. Solution. Are you a solution provider? How do you respond to problems? Solution. It is because some people are reacting and responding in fear. That's the reason why even before a problem comes to Nigeria, they are already dead. Solution. David was already, he, had, he was already calculating. How am I, I'm going to, to destroy this particular giant. From today, you must be a solution provider. Many of you, when you go to school, you are only thinking of certificates. And then they ask you, what have you studied? I have a M MSc Mechanical Engineering. Is that what is going to make you great in life? No. It is the solution you carry. When you go, when you enter any organization, they will ask you, what value are you going to add to this organization? Uh, uh, I did BSc chemistry. Shut up! Is that solution? When you are entering an organization, you must know where, which problems they are facing and how it can be solved. You don't go to interview like somebody who doesn't know what you are doing. You must bring something to the table before an organization will consider your employment. That's the reason why people have been walking around the streets for 8 years, for 10 years. Because they don't carry solution. Many of you, you think that it is by carrying certificates that people will give you job. No! They are not going to give you job because of certificates. They will give you job because you carry solution. My time is far, it's, it's really moving very fast. David was patriotic. An average Nigerian doesn't have the sense of patriotism. Today, what is this, the, what is that single word that you hear everywhere among our youths? Jackpa. Jackpa. I want to Jackpa. I want to Jackpa. Where you are Jackpa into? Do you know what is there? Do you know what makes me sad? Some people have worked all their life in Nigeria. They have few properties. They have some money. They sold everything that they have. Sold everything. They converted everything to dollars or to pan sterling. And those people are not stupid. You think they are stupid? <laughs> ah, you make me to laugh like Englishman. The 
They are not stupid though. They have not provided any job on ground for you. I have seen professors who became taxi drivers. I'm talking of professors. This is not a, I'm not talking of professor of shoe or professor of, um, of suya. I'm talking of real professor. When they have nothing to do, they have to become taxi drivers. And not, not that they became taxi driver for one day or for two days. Five years, ten years, they are still doing the same thing. Jackpot. Do you know where you are going? If they should ask someone around you, my brother, do you know where you are going? I am not really sure, but I just want to go. What will you call that man? What will you call him? That's the reason why. Before you make a move, ask your father over there. Dad, what does my future look like? Where do you want me to go? Isaac, there was farming in the land. Isaac wanted to move. God said, don't leave. Stay in this land. And the Bible says, he sold in that same land that year. And he had wonderful return. Others were living. They had nothing. Those who left, they still went into farming. Ask your father. From the day you have become a child of God, you are not an ordinary person anymore. You can't do anything without asking God. Ask your father. Be patriotic. May I tell you something before I close today? Let me tell you something. Jews, they love that land. They love their land. Any of you has traveled to Palestine, to the land of the Middle Middle East, you will understand what I'm talking about. That place is desert. Mere desert. But they love the land. They said, that is the land God gave to our father. By AD 70, AD 70, about 40 years after Jesus had left, General Titus of Roman Empire came to Jerusalem and destroyed the whole of Jerusalem and burnt their temple and carried them away to captivity. And the Jews were scattered all over the world. And that scattering continued until 1948. When God gave them the land back. Why? Why do they get the land? The Arabs never wanted them to come back. But the Jews are too patriotic. Anywhere a Jew may be, it doesn't matter how prosperous he may be. The only place that he will call his country is Israel. So when they were scattered all over the world, wherever they are, anytime they meet themselves on the road, they greet each other. Greet each other. What you say? Like you greet them and say, good morning, how are you doing? They will say, shalom, next year in Jerusalem. Next year in Jerusalem. Next year in Jerusalem. Patriotism. They are attached to that land. That's why they are there today. They are surrounded by enemies. You can imagine the country that is not up to 15 million. Surrounded by over 200 million enemies. They are not afraid of the enemies. The enemies are afraid of them. When you know the God you carry, it doesn't matter how many people surround you. They will fear you. Stand up on your feet, everybody.
I wish I have enough time to take you through these words. But I believe the little that we have done today will open your eyes to have an understanding that you are not an ordinary person. God is taking you somewhere. Don't allow anybody to rubbish you. You are a great man. You are a great woman. You are a carrier of a great God. There is a deposit within you. The deposit that God himself has put there. Just like the Jews. Just as they are proud of their land. And proud of their God. You must be proud of the God you carry. You are a lion's cub. Lion cannot be like any other animal. Wherever you walk, after you have left this particular conference, you must walk like royalty. Not because you are proud, but because you know who you are. I want you to raise up your hand to God and say, Lord, I thank you for who you have made me. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and pray that prayer. I thank you because of who you have made me. Bless his name and worship him. Bless his name and worship him. I thank you for who you have made me. I am not an ordinary person. I bless your name. Thank you, my father. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your name, O Lord. Be thou exalted from generation to generation. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let your amen be louder. Just two prayers, and I will leave you. Prayer number one. I don't want to be stagnant. I want to make progress every day. Help me to make progress. Pray that prayer for yourself. Judah started as a lion's whelp. As a lion's cub. But he was supposed to go to become lion. And to become an old lion. Great lion. And he was growing. Help me to make progress. Help me to mature in faith. Spiritual maturity. To develop Christian character. Help me Lord. Help me Lord. Let me take in your word daily so that I can become like you. As we focus on you, we are changed from glory to glory. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Second prayer. You will say, Heavenly Father, From today, let challenges run away from me. I don't want to be the one running away from challenges. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Many of us have been running away from challenges. From today, I want to confront challenges. Not to run away from them again. I will never... Run away from challenges from now. Never. I am the child of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let challenges run away from me. Let them fly for me. Let them, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them run away with speed. The strangers, they shall run out from their hiding places. That's what the Bible says. I am not the one to run. My challenges were on. Father Lord, I am your child. Wherever I go, I represent royalty. Let challenges run away from me. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Since I don't have time to finish this particular thing, I will just pray for you that what I cannot do, the Holy Spirit will finish it. Stretch your hands towards this place. 
stretch your hands air my father i commit this your beloved children to your mighty hand the day that you went to Emmaus, you went because of only two people two people who were confused who were afraid who were uncertain about their future your presence changed their narratives daddy i have come here as your representative and i'm asking now all this your children who have listened to this world even as they have heard you today change their stories in the name of jesus there are several things i would have loved to tell them but there is no time but daddy i'm asking blessed holy spirit minister to them in the name of jesus i ask the lord by virtue of this particular topic as many who had backslidden before restore them today in the name of jesus my father this is your children because they are leaders in your house and you have brought them here to to fine-tune them to refashion them to reform them daddy i pray even as they are listening to your word every change that should take place that will, will make them that leader that you desire for their level father lord we pray you will effect the changes in the name of jesus I come against every power of darkness that has not allowed you to fulfill destiny. I command you, loose your grip from this life in the name of Jesus. That particular brother and sister who has been hearing strange noise in your head. I command all such noises be silent in the name of Jesus. That individual who is never certain about life, you have even attempted to commit suicide. You are always confused. There is a spirit of fear that has made your heart is about. I command fear relocates my father there is an individual here at every point in time whenever he gets to a particular situation people will like him they will put him in situation they will put him in, in position they will trust him they will entrust a lot of responsibilities to him but at every point in time, he has always ended in shame. And God has sent me to you. You carry the destiny of greatness from heaven. But the enemy has also determined to rubbish your destiny. I decree today, everything that has been mobilized against your greatness... I scatter them in the name of Jesus. I decree from now that greatness, that royalty that God designed you for, you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. And very soon I will hear your testimonies. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put our trust together for Jesus.
Yeah. Shall we just stretch forth our hands to our daddy as it's going?